just a basic um, equation. If the United States has all of the gold that we've claimed to have since the last audit in the 1950s, if, if we in fact do have all that gold and you divide it into $35 trillion of debt, if we had to pay our debt off with the supposed gold that we have, and I highly doubt we have all that, uh, but assuming we do, the number would have to be over $125,000 an ounce. If you saw silver blowing out to the upside, that's going to drag gold along. That's going to light a fire under gold and thus destroy confidence in fiat currency. So the reason silver is the biggest redheaded stepchild in the history of financial markets is because it is the fuse to light gold on fire and gold is kryptonite to Western fiat currencies. You mm. told us also, Bill, here in your last interview with um, Greg Hunter on USA Watchdog, you were extrapolating whether or not we would um, back a currency by gold. You talked about different parameters, 10%, 20%, and 40%. And based on each of those parameters, what could be or should be the gold price to make all of that accounting work? Now, in this particular unit announcement here for September, they're talking about that 40% gold backing here. Can you, explain, can you explain to our audience what that means for the price of gold? Explain that, um, um, how you make those calculations, and then let's also extrapolate that to perhaps what's going to happen with And I did gold. hear Bill call that publicly. He said, I think it will be 40% gold. He said it. Right. He's like Absolutely. a soothsayer or something. <laughs> you must be psychic. You want to do some readings on my show, Bill? <laughs> 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 uh, before I get into that, I want to mention that uh, the repatriation of gold mm -hmm. really started back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I did the math on it. If you remember, Germany wanted to repatriate uh, 300 tons. And publicly, it was said, oh, well, there's no way we could do that. That's just too risky to ship that much. It's going to take us years, blah, blah, blah. And when Germany did get their gold, it was not the gold that they originally deposited. The serial numbers were off. And I mean, I, in simple math, a 747 cargo plane can hold or can carry 95 tons. Yeah. So 95 tons divided you know, into 300 is three plane loads and a small one. They could have done it in two weeks, but they said, oh, no, no, no. And it didn't get finalized until 2017. Now, as far as the 40% backing, which I'm happy that it's that high. I thought it was possibly only going to be 20, 25%. But understand, you know, look at the math on the amount of global trade that gets settled every day. And if, if it's going to get settled in this currency, man, that's a lot of gold. And guess what? At current prices, there's not enough gold. So they're going to have to revalue gold. Pick a number. I don't even, I, I can't even really guess. Threefold, fivefold, tenfold. Who knows where they're going to settle gold uh, price wise in order to make it uh, valuable enough to basically settle 40% of global trade. It's a huge number. Um, and the gold, at, like I said, at current prices, does not even exist. So let's get back into that uh, interview with Greg Hunter. You kind of gave some prices there. You referred to some of the older predictions also uh, by your ex-partner, uh, Jim Sinclair. Where do we see gold as a starting part here if we're backing it at 40%? Uh, no idea. The, the math that I did for that interview um, basic, it was just a basic um, equation. If the United States has all of the gold that we've claimed to have since the last audit in the 1950s, if, if we in fact do have all that gold and you divide it into $35 trillion of debt, if we had to pay our debt off with the supposed gold that we have, and I highly doubt we have all that, uh, but assuming we do, the number would have to be over $125,000 an ounce. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as a 
a trade currency. I'd have to see exactly what the what the global global trade is uh, minus the West, but it wouldn't be completely minus the West because if the West is trading with BRICS nations, then one would think that the Western nations would have to have these units in order to settle the trade. So they're going to have to go out, dump dollars, dump euros, dump yen, dump British pounds to create the capital to purchase these units. And of course, uh, you know, that's basically a, a, a bid directly underneath gold because, you know, probably the easiest way uh, to purchase a unit would be with gold itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are you going to do it with 50, the other 60%, if it's going to be 50 different currencies, there's no way that'd be like trying to herd cats. So you just go directly to the source, you buy gold. And basically what you've done is you've bought yourself, you know, representative units, if you will. What you said about silver, you were talking about the overhead resistance. Many people in these uh, communities are talking about that $50 mark from the last uh, all-time high. You're suggesting the overhead yeah. resistance is much lower than that, that perhaps maybe the weak hands have already been washed out here, given the time span between that last high. Explain that to the audience members. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I mean, the last high was 50 and in, in between that move, I think we ran from $15 or $17 up to 50 bucks in about a six month period of time in late 2010, first half of 2011. And, you know, there was, there was choppiness. It would, you know, and, and I don't even know if these numbers are real or not. I'd have to actually look at a chart. Uh, but, you know, we, we ran up to, 20, 25, pulled back a little bit, ran up to 30, 35, pulled back a little bit, chopped at 40, and then we spiked up to 50. So on the way up, there were resistance levels. Mm -hmm. And on the way down, you know, we bounced off of 44, uh, we bounced off of 40, bounced off of 32 and 30, you know, crashed through 30. Normally, those would be uh, points to look at for uh, support and resistance, but that's 11, 12 years ago, mm -hmm. 13 years ago. Uh, so those are those are long gone, long forgotten. Um, and I mean, the, the sellers at whatever level or the buyers at whatever level, they're all gone. So those are meaningless, right. uh, they're meaningless numbers. So, I mean, in reality, there's nothing to stop silver from going, we break through 3250, there's nothing to stop it from going immediately to 50 bucks. Do I think it's gonna happen, you know, immediately? No, I think in a, in a more normal market frame, it probably should take, I don't know, three months, six months, uh, and that would be a, a rip snorting bull market. But at some point in time, we're going to have a failure to deliver. We're going to have a massive short covering squeeze and it very well could turn out that it works out like a light switch where $50 is meaningless and it blows right through $50 like it wasn't even there. My partner, Jim Sinclair, used to talk about the, the scenario where you could see gold $50,000 bid and COMEX contracts for gold $10 offered and no bids. And the reasoning behind that is his question was, what is the value of a contract? that cannot perform mm -hmm. and a failure to delivery is not performance. Right. So basically you could have the, the contracts go to zero and you could have gold basically unobtainable. Mm -hmm. JC, now would be the time to show that, that chart I just sent you and to help really underscore what Billy was just saying. If you look at that chart, that's a, one of the slides from a presentation I'm giving this week. The red line represents the big four banks on COMEX that are short. The green line represents the top big eight, eight bullion banks. If you notice that there are eight banks right now short, the largest concentrated short position on any commodity ever traded in the history of the COMEX market in silver. Now, why the hell would that happen? Of course, followed number two, platinum, gold, palladium. So, you know, the four precious metals that are monetary metals as much as anything are being suppressed by eight banks to a degree that the COMEX market has never, ever, ever seen. And when you talk about the CFTC as supposed to 
protect against collusion, against price fixing. Well, they're really doing a shitty job because this is exactly what they're supposed to protect against. Silver is a small market. It is minuscule the size of most of these other markets. And look at the concentrated short position of four and eight big banks that are holding the price down. And what beats them at this game are countries like India, who are standing for delivery and took almost 700 million ounces from the West in the last two and a half years. And then they just, because they have this deal with United Arab Emirates where they, they don't have to pay duties, Last year in 2023, they did $2.2 million worth of silver imports from January to April, United Arab Emirates, India did from them. And now over the same time frame this year, 1.44 billion worth of silver imported a 654 fold increase. They're buying silver wherever they can. Uh -huh. And they're using the suppression of these idiots right here, these eight banks who are holding the price down to reposition, and that is how they win. No one ever stood for delivery. It is how you win, because all of this selling right there, you're talking way, way more silver that is in contract form than they have the ability to deliver if called to the carpet. And this is how it all ends poorly. And when you see that chart, it should really explain a lot of things. Bill, you're uh, an authorized broker for Miles Franklin. Um, what are you hearing right now in the last couple of weeks talking to clients by are, are we seeing uh, market jitters right now? I, I know a couple of years ago, we had a big uh, panic to own moment you guys phones were off the hook, it kind of died down with the premiums the last couple of months. But just now in the last couple of weeks, as we're seeing this huge turnaround here happening on the geopolitical front, what are you hearing? What are people telling you? Yeah, uh, up until a couple of weeks ago, I think, yes, it had slowed down somewhat. Uh, we're getting, and Andy can confirm this or, or deny it, but I think what we're seeing are less orders, but bigger orders. Um, the phones yeah. aren't ringing as much. I'm not getting as many emails. Um, and I, I do think that North America as a whole, uh, the the demand is down. And that's, that's the reason that you're seeing uh, premiums back to where they were before COVID and basically normalized. Mm -hmm. um, and I do want to mention that chart that you that uh, Andy had sent you and put up. Uh, you'll notice that the top four most heavily shorted are gold, silver, platinum, palladium. Platinum and palladium, not really uh, precious metals, not really money. Um, they're they're more uh, industrial. Silver is a hybrid. It's industrial and money and gold is money. Uh, the, my, the comment I want to make is. You have to ask yourself why. Why is it that the metals themselves are more heavily shorted than anything else? And I think it's a very simple answer, and it's something we've talked about for years and years, is that the reason gold, and I'm using gold and only gold right now, the reason gold has been suppressed for all these years, I mean, literally, go back to the 1960s, the London Gold Pool. Uh, there's been a concerted effort by Western governments to suppress the price of gold. And the simple reason is gold is the anti-dollar. Gold is the number one direct competitor to the dollar. I mean, if we if if we were talking right now and gold was $24,000 an ounce instead of $2,400 an ounce, that would be indicative of a, a collapse in confidence so what they've done is they've tried to prop the dollar up by by knocking the crap out of gold you know whenever they get a chance with paper so that they can point at the price of gold and see see gold bad dollar good mm -hmm. now why is silver more heavily suppressed than gold and andy touched on it because it's such a minuscule market i mean total global production even at today's prices, only amounts to about $20 billion a year. And I mean, you got individuals now that could drop $20 billion out of their pocket and not miss it. So it's an absolute minuscule market. But if you saw silver run to 50 bucks, 75 bucks, 100 bucks, 200, 300, 500, if you saw silver blowing out to the upside, that's going to drag gold along that's going to light a fire under gold and thus 
destroy confidence in fiat currency. So the reason silver is the biggest redheaded stepchild in the history of financial markets is because it is the fuse to light gold on fire and gold is kryptonite to Western fiat currencies. How about gold also? People are asking when they get into this, what's their split? Did they buy 50-50 gold and silver? Did they go heavier on silver to capture this wave? What would you suggest to the audience members? I'll start with you, Andy, as you're on the screen, and then we'll ask. Yeah, I mean, gold's the only tier one asset in the world. It's important. Silver is the value of a generation. And if you play the silver to gold ratio, which I think is highly probable that we see it revise, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's coming out of the ground at seven to one or less, and it's priced at 80 to one. It, it's the, it's the, it's the trade of a generation from, from a pure standpoint of potential and undervaluation at silver. Um, and I would not ignore silver in terms of the way the central banks are accumulating it, but I will tell you that in the end, I think a lot of your assets would, we would prefer to convert silver to gold when that ratio corrects because it is the only other tier one asset. And let's be honest, you know, Bill could put a million dollars worth of gold in his backpack and get on his horse and go for a ride. A million dollars worth of silver, the horse would be pulling a trailer that would weigh 1,500, 2,000 pounds. So, you know, it's it's a, um, this, is, this is the main problem, logistics. But silver for value, in the end, I have a hard time believing that gold would not be the place to have the majority of your assets, but not yet. Silver provides probably the most undervalued or, or best trade silver to gold um of my career for sure um i'll put some numbers on it my recommendation now for the last probably three years four years has been if you're going to do a mix between gold and silver uh you should be at least 70 percent silver and the idea being when all is said and done you're going to want to be at least 70 percent gold the ratio is at 80 right now if that ratio comes down to 40, that means that silver outperformed gold two to one. So if you bought all silver, ignoring taxes, if you bought all silver and you swapped out at 40 to one from where we are at 80 to one, you would be able to buy two gold ounces for every one gold ounce that you could buy today. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to be heavier in silver. And if you want to be 100% in silver or, you know, 95% in silver, I don't have a problem with that. But don't, on, on the way out, don't get cute. Um, if we see, say, 50, 55 to 1, you swap out to whatever you want to ultimately get to, swap out a quarter tranche. And then at 40 to 1, swap out another qu uh, quarter tranche. And if we get down to 25, 30 to 1, swap the rest of it out and now you're at 70 30 gold or 80 80 20 gold uh whatever but yes you want to be when all is said and done you want to be heavier uh in gold than silver because gold is the only thing gold is is money and silver obviously is money it's industrial <laughs> uh, medicinal solar etc cetera, etc cetera. um so I, I mean, I, I think trading the ratio just makes all the sense in the world because the ratio was created by what we were talking about before. It was created by the fact that they're suppressing silver as hard as they are. They've suppressed it harder than gold because they can't let it go higher without gold taking notice and then lighting up the whole system. So right. take advantage of their suppression to get to an 80 to 80 to one ratio and write it down to 40 or 50 and end up with more gold ounces than if you just bought it outright today. And 40 to one is roughly the 200 year average price wise as Bill calls it man's ratio, God's ratio as he calls it right now and appropriate to call it that is about seven to one. That's what it's coming out of the ground at. So at 40 to one, which would be an average of two, two centuries roughly, you're um, still six times above what it's coming out of the ground with. So he's saying pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. When you get anywhere near that point, trade some of it. And and I think it is the best, especially if you're in an IRA, because now you have no storage issues for the silver and the ability to no tax issues when you make the trade. So, right. but yeah, I, I consider it to be the trade of, of my career too.